Mayo Clinic is world famous and is consistently ranked as a top hospital globally. Um, they're soon going to be celebrating 150 years. So um, AZ Bio just celebrated a 20 year milestone. I don't think I'll be here for the 150th anniversary, um, but I can't imagine what you'll all be creating at that one point. Um, please join me in welcoming our newest AZ Bio board member, Dr. Stephen Lester and Eric Bopp, both from the Mayo Clinic. It's great to see you and welcome to the board, Steve. An honor and good morning to all of you. <laughs> so, you know, it's interesting when we talk about the importance of going to investor conferences, that's where you and I first met. Was it at the Med? It might be, I don't <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it was a long time ago. Um, but I think that, you know, looking at growing the ecosystem, getting the ecosystem moving, is critically important. But Steve, you know, you and I have known each other for a long time, but the audience doesn't necessarily know you as well. Why don't you give them a, just, just a quick, you know, who's Dr. Lester? Okay. Well, again, good morning, everyone. It's a privilege to be here. It's going to be fun to, to work with you, Joan, on the AZ Bio Board moving forward. It's inspiring to see what is happening in the ecosystem. My name is Steve Lester. I'm a cardiologist. I've been working here in Arizona at Mayo Clinic for about 25 years. I've had a, a number of, of opportunities to do various things within the organization. I spent about eight and a half years in business development, so that was Mayo Clinic Ventures, corporate development, and in August of this year, transitioned from that, that business development role to have the privilege to work with Eric here, who we'll meet in a moment, on the Discovery Oasis mm -hmm. uh, project to serve as the medical director for Discovery Oasis, which is an exciting project. I founded and, and am the chief medical officer of the Mayo Clinic ASU MedTech Accelerator Program. This is a program we actually house here. James is part of the program and, and others, uh, where we bring uh, companies in. Maybe we'll talk about this later, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So I've had the opportunity to do that. And I also um, serve as the associate medical director, enterprise and medical director for contracting and payer relations here uh, for Mayo Clinic. So really working to serve contracts to the large insurance companies, self-funded employer groups, uh, and so forth. Awesome. Eric? I'm a simple economic developer that has... Let's make sure that's on. Push it up. Push it up. Yeah. There you go. You're left. See, I got to help him all the time. That's why I got on this role with him. He's my technology support. He, he has an apple. I have a, not an apple. Right. So, uh, my name is Eric Bopp. I'm a lifelong economic developer that is fortunate enough to be part of the Mayo Clinic now for four months. Prior to joining the Mayo Clinic team, I was at Arizona State University. Uh, ASU has four campuses here in the Phoenix metro area. In addition to the four campuses, ASU is fortunate to control about a thousand acres of land throughout the valley. Most colleges, universities call them research parks. ASU has a different name for everything, so we call them innovation zones. Uh, and so we were working with the seven innovation zones throughout the valley. Um, since joining Mayo Clinic, uh, I've gotten to work with side-by-side -side individuals like Dr. Lester and the incredible people that make Mayo Clinic what it is today. That's what's so exciting about Discovery Oasis, not, not the beautiful piece of dirt we have just outside this room, but the connections and the collaboration and the opportunity that's going to exist to really transform the landscape here in North Phoenix. Awesome. So, Eric... Yeah, we, I said, you've got a birthday coming up. Next, is it next year, 150 years? Oh, Eric's doing 150 years. No, no, years. Hey, Eric's going to hit. Mayo's, <laughs> That's pretty good for 150. <laughs> Mayo's going to be 150, You should see I the work we're doing at Mayo's. Yeah, we're excited about <laughs> it's that. It's aesthetics. It's aesthetics here. <laughs> well, wait a minute. We heard about this incredible uh, dermatologist at a company earlier today and last yeah. night, so look how done it's good for, for Eric. That's right. So... You know, I remember in the early 90s, Steve, when I went for my first executive health checkup at Mayo, and 
it was at the, the Scottsdale facility, and I thought I was driving out into the middle of nowhere. And I looked around at all of this land, and I was like, why did they put that there? And today, it, it, it's surrounded. Um, Eric, what, how do you see the Discovery Oasis blossoming into that type of development over time? Well, first and foremost, I think our location is pretty strategic um, because we can access the West Valley just as well as the East Valley. We can access downtown Phoenix. It, it, it truly is a regional collaboration. It's a regional destination. One of the terms that they use in the Mayo Clinic is a destination medical center. Our destination medical center here in Phoenix, Arizona is not just a regional destination, but a global destination. People come from all over the world. Having Sky Harbor Airport um, to, to serve that, Scottsdale Air Park, we have some um, products and services that get flown in through Scottsdale. It's just a wonderful ecosystem that exists. I, I don't know if you could pick a better location today than what they picked 20, 30 years ago when they selected the site which I think uh, all credit due to, to those that Mayo Clinic with the vision for what would be developed here in, in North Phoenix. As far as the ecosystem goes, having Arizona State University, the most innovative university in the U.S., nine years in a row now um, as part of one of our anchor tenants at Discovery Oasis, part of our Mayo Clinic campus, what a wonderful partner. But also in Phoenix, we have the University of Arizona. We have other wonderful higher education partners. We're really building a world-class healthcare, biotech, life sciences ecosystem where we have all the pieces of the puzzle. We just need to put them together and then we need to tell the world about them. And that's why we're all excited to talk about what we're doing at Discovery Oasis and throughout the region, whether it's the Phoenix Bioscience Corps, Midtown with Creighton University, it, it is it is exciting to see everything that's coming together. So, Steve, I mean, I know because I have to work around your patient schedule. You're still seeing patients as well as doing all of the other things that you're doing. Working with the ASU MedTech Accelerator, you're getting to see new technologies that are benefit that can benefit the patients and also take that patient experience and interact with the companies that are bringing those new innovations forward was uh, i know a lot of that is what the help asu medtech accelerator brings can you tell us more about that sure so you know many years ago when i started in business development at mayo clinic as a first physician actually so it was the, the dermatologist in rochester and then myself here in arizona they decided hey maybe we should have docs in the business development group which turned out to be really inspiring to me. You talked about J.P. Morgan a minute. That was one of the first things I did was go to J.P. Morgan, and I'm sitting there with all the businessmen and lawyers and venture capitalists, and like I, you know, it's like a different language. You know, the monkey with the symbols was going off in my head as everyone's talking about this, that. But then at the end of uh, one of the meetings, one of the principals of a very large venture capital fund, you know, pulls my arm and he says, "Hey, Steve, let's go," and. He basically took me to his office. We spent two and a half hours. And what he really wanted is he didn't want to talk about the legal. He wanted me to look through the healthcare portfolio and through the lens and perspective of a provider, you know, how would this fit into the healthcare marketplace? Mm -hmm. And very quickly, I began to understand what my place really was going to be in corporate and business development. So, Joan, not to go long winded on this, but what had happened for many, many years is we had what I would call a push strategy of innovation, mm -hmm. where we take internal intellectual properties and ideas and so we push them through from ideation to commercialization. Mm -hmm. Well, man, that's a very long, lonely road. And you have to take a lot of shots on goal. Mm -hmm. And Mayo Clinic in Arizona, now, you know, 1987, the hospital here in 1998, we were really built on the backs of incredibly gifted wise clinicians that had really built the clinical expertise around Mayo Clinic. But man, we really didn't have a lot of people that were taking concepts and starting companies and doing this. So I went the other way and I said, why don't we take these dynamic, creative, innovative startup companies that are hyper-focused on a particular market segment, recognizing that, Joan, these companies aren't just winning, aren't just competing, but they're winning against large incumbent healthcare organizations like the Lavongos, the Nurks, the Romans, why is that? 
They do that because these companies had access to all the patients they could ever dream of, not because they had this huge infrastructure base, but through social media channels, which you didn't have years ago. They had all the computational power they could ever dream of in the cloud. They had could transfer time-consuming tasks to machines with artificial intelligence. So one of the greatest assets we have in Arizona and we have at Mayo Clinic and with all of us is our know-how intellectual property. Mm -hmm. So if we could bring in ideologically linked companies and connect them with, with individuals within our organizations, then we can work on co-development and, and so forth. So, I mean, that's how it was sort of the vision of driving the accelerator program. And someone had mentioned, I think it was you, sir, or somebody had talked about this, where what we also recognize really important is that large corporates are more and more outsourcing their innovation, as someone had mentioned, to startups mm -hmm. and startup accelerators. Why? Because it's expensive. It's time consuming. So they'd rather bring them in, work on co-development with a vision and a lens towards acquisition. We recognize this. And so that's what we began to develop through this accelerator program. At, in its sort of current structure has been running for about four or five cohorts, but it was many different iterations before we kind of got it rolling. So sorry for the long-winded answer, but that's really the genesis of how I sort of said, hey, I should get this thing uh, moving along. And we've had a great partnership with ASU. Uh, and, you know, I look, Eric, at what you're building and what, as a community, we're all building. And it's going to take growing young companies it's going to take bringing in large corporate partners. And so I'm going to JP Morgan. I'm going to Anaheim for Avamed in two weeks. I'm going to be on the East Coast for a couple of other conferences before Christmas. Um, if I had an elevator pitch to say why a major strategic or a high potential company should be talking to Eric about the Discovery Oasis. Coach me, please. So first and foremost, we aren't the coastal communities, and we don't have the baggage associated with the coastal communities. It's hard to think of a location in Boston, Baltimore, Atlanta, San Francisco, San Diego, that could offer what we have in Arizona today. You're not going to find 120 acres of land available adjacent to a destination medical center, adjacent to a tier one research university. That doesn't exist in those coastal communities today. So that, that's part of the elevator pitch. In addition to that, we are building a world-class innovation ecosystem with the Mayo Clinic. There is only one Mayo Clinic. Sure, the Cleveland Clinic does some incredible things. There's a lot of hospital systems that do incredible things. I'm four months in at Mayo. There's only one Mayo Clinic. And being able to partner with the best and the brightest that take on the most challenging, complex healthcare challenges of today is a unique opportunity. And to be able to do that in the fastest growing county in the U.S., a place that's great for business, we've got more college-age students in Phoenix, Arizona today than in Boston, Massachusetts. We have the largest community college system in the United States with 180,000 students at the community college. We've got water resources, we've got affordable electricity, we don't have natural disasters. Why would you invest anywhere else? It is a great place to do business, it's a great value proposition, and it's a great opportunity to grow biotech and life sciences companies. I'm so glad we have that on tape so I can memorize that later. <laughs> so how would you add to that, Steve? Uh, it's tough to add, but what I would say is, why would people come here? It's for all of us, right? What we're building in Discovery Oasis, we, we have a vision here for a future where, where healthcare truly transcends expectations. And we want to sort of see the intersection of science with technology, human well-being, ethical considerations that not only create a future that is bright, but that is profoundly transformative. And the ecosystem that we're all developing here helps to create that. Being here gives access to Mayo Clinic, access to intellectual property, access to data, access to patients, access to science expertise, and importantly, which I think we all feel, 
is the notion of access to capital. And we do have some capital under management that at times we can support mm -hmm. uh, these programs as, as they are strategically and clinically aligned. And that for, for our organization, and I apologize, you know, for all my time in Arizona, I've worked at Mayo Clinic, so please appreciate the perspective that I'm coming at. But for our organization and for the Discovery Oasis, a fundamental tenant is that collaboration has absolutely no borders. Mm -hmm. And that it's only through the strategic and collaborative and complementary partnerships that will allow us to redefine the boundaries of what's possible in healthcare and what we're trying to achieve. And I think it's that which ignites the human spirit of innovation. And that sort of culture and, and opportunity is what we're going to create here. We've already started. And now we just need to continue to build it. And what I've said, Joan, the other day, and I'll say it again, I apologize, Eric, but some, we were talking a few days ago, you know, what do we need? And I think that the vertical components of, of, of what we're looking to develop here exists. Mm -hmm. But what, what we're lacking is what I call the connective tissue that brings it all together. The, the venture capital, the mm -hmm. compliance, the regulatory, the legal, the access to mm -hmm. talent, and how do we collaboratively sort of structure those integrated pipelines that really connect the vertical components of manufacturing, life sciences, mm -hmm. medical devices, and so forth, because we're all searching for the same thing. And I think it's here to some extent, but we just need to find a way to connect it, to create that sort of connective tissue, that glue that holds these, these ecosystems together. And it's sort of a chicken or the egg, right? People said, oh, we need more access to venture capital. How are we going to drive money? We've talked about this. Mm -hmm. We get that too. What's first, the venture capitalists or the companies, right? So and we can have a long discussion around how, the, how this sort of rolls from, from my perspective. But I think we're really close. And I think just this vision for, for what we're trying to do here, what's happening in downtown Phoenix, as Eric would say, it, it's, it's truly an inspiring time to be here. So. I'm not sure why individuals would not want to come here. I also think it's a relatively business-friendly state mm -hmm. with which to engage in. It is, and I think, you know, I, I remember sitting on a different stage. This building hadn't been built yet um, with Dr. Gray. And we, it was just as the Discovery Net Oasis had been announced. And the big question was, well, what's going to go there? And so we were at the International Regenerative Medicine Conference that was hosted by Mayo Clinic. And we were talking about the new technologies, not being just an also ran state, but to use your hockey analogy from earlier. So m many of you know, if you don't go to where I want you to be at certain times, I start yelling like a hockey mom because I am a retired hockey mom. And yes, you got to take a lot of shots on goal, but sometimes you leave that laser focus to take that winning shot from the point. And, um, you know, we have some very, very, very skilled shooters here in Arizona who are able to get that point on goal. And um, how do we leverage people like yourself and Dr. Eric Ryman, you know, at Banner? and you know the amazing work that mark slater is doing at at the um honor health research center taking those researchers together with our university researchers and then taking that story to the major um players around the country and around the world and saying we're inviting you to come here with us how would we have that conversation, Eric? How do we bring those big players in to be part of what we're doing? I think first and foremost, we have to recognize this is not a local competition. This is not a state competition, as much as I dislike California and Texas. This, this is not a, a national competition. This is a global competition for those companies and for those investments that, that we need to pool our assets and resources together in order to best leverage this sense of place that we have 
growing in Phoenix, Arizona. And then we need to leverage the collective resources, that connective tissue, um, to reach out to those companies, to those executives, and make sure our story is being told and be opportunistic about opportunities to invite them to come and see for themselves what we're developing here. Um, as much fun as the Waste Management Phoenix Open is, it is also a great business development tool for the state of Arizona and for Phoenix. We're going to be hosting the Final Four this year. I think that's a great opportunity. Any chance we get to host these executives from these targeted companies, utilizing the connections throughout the community, not just the Mayo Clinic connections, will expedite the emergence of this emerging biotech market. Awesome. Steve, anything you want to add to that? I, I, not really. I think, Eric, you, you said it nicely. I, it's not just words because it seems like the right thing to say, Joan, but we are a community that needs to work together. Mm -hmm. Because, as we say, we truly are, and, I, and it sounds like, oh, that's just the right thing, to, but it's really how we feel here. Mm -hmm. We're all going to win by attracting these companies, and when, by, in the end, from, from male speak, we, we say we all win, humankind wins. Our goal is, is to, to improve the human condition. And what inspires us and some of the work that James and others are doing is that my, my world has been primarily in, in tech, as you know, mm -hmm. and you initially mm -hmm. as well. But what's really inspiring about that to, to me is it truly begins to provide an equity dimension to healthcare. As Thomas remarked, the world becomes very flat and we can disseminate best practices and knowledges because of interconnected, not human brains, but computer brains, where knowledge can be disseminated with the click of a button and standard of practices can be a, a, a adjacent. And we can build that all here. We just want to be that hub and in infrastructure. There really isn't, we don't feel competition in Eric and I, whether company goes downtown, comes up here, come to Phoenix, see what you've got, and they're gonna decide where they wanna be, and that's great, and we're all gonna win by, by doing that. So, I mean, just grateful to have all of you and to, to be part of the AZ Bio Board now and, and have some insights there. I work with the Galleon Foundation, as you're aware of too, so that, that opens a number of doors to us, and and we're really excited about the opportunities. So, you know, Galleons is a, a great example, and this can be the, the first year, I think, that I've missed an in-person Galleon in a long time. But um, when we look at that, many people in this room don't know what the Galleons are. Um, you know, if our industry has an Oscars, that's the Galleon Awards. Um, and everyone comes together, and it's the only conference that I go to regularly where you're literally sitting in the same room with the CEOs of all of the major med tech and pharma companies um, for a day. When we have those conversations and we look at the challenges that are out there, we're looking at lots of opportunities, but we're also looking at some hurdles right now. Um, you know, as we know, we, we're now gonna take a major hit for R&D funding in the United States in the biopharma space as um, the Inflation Reduction Act goes into effect um, and they start the negotiation and that's going, to, that's going to have an impact on some of the R&D dollars that are available to, to move some of these innovations forward. Um, on the other side of it, the, the markets are a little unstable right now, which is making the um, investment com community squirrely. I think a lot of the VCs that I've talked to are saying, you know, let's pull back a little bit. We're going to have to reserve more capital for our current portfolio company. Um, it also is going to impact the ability for these large companies to expand operations. How do we, um, you know, envision that type of an economy um, being to our advantage because of the lower cost of doing business here in Arizona? Having been in this world for 20 years, um, whether the economy is good and companies are growing or the economy is tight and 
companies are taking a hard look at cost. There's always opportunity created by a changing marketplace. And, and right now, that opportunity, companies are going to have to take a hard look about how they spend their capital, where they spend the capital, and why they spend their capital. And that's why you have to be very spot on with your value proposition. And I think that's where Arizona and Phoenix and Discovery Oasis are well positioned to take advantage. Those capital expenses are going to continue to occur. They're going to take a harder look at San Diego. They're going to take a harder look at investing in San Francisco. They're going to take a harder look at investing in Boston. And hopefully, they'll say there's got to be other options in the US besides these high cost locations. And I don't want us to be in the habit of winning projects just because we don't cost as much as Boston or we don't cost as much as San Francisco. I want us to be winning projects because we have an equal value proposition to those communities. And oh, by the way, we're also going to be 10, 20, 30 percent less expensive to operate there. I think when we can convey that message, be on a level playing field with those other communities, tier one communities, and then be able to demonstrate that in addition to the wonderful resources we have, we are also slightly less expensive. That's when we'll really come out on top. Well, geographically, it doesn't hurt that you can get to 65% of the U.S. population by plane within two hours and by land in 24. So if you're looking to expand across the United States, there's no place better positioned than Arizona. Yeah, listen, these are great questions. I didn't know the questions you're going to ask us, but it makes me <laughs> sit here and think. You know, we have this, in essence, in some ways, well, for us, it's a blank canvas. We just have some nice dirt around here, so it truly is a blank canvas. Um, but you know, what, 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 what I really hope for all of us is that if you really think about it frequently, management teams, mm -hmm. right, they like to, you know, excel in businesses and processes they already understand and know how to operate, right? So the outcome becomes sort of excellence in current trends. Mm -hmm. We don't want to follow. So what we want to do is we want to take sort of these laser shots yep. and we want to create an outcome which is an excellence in new trends. We're trying to create a new trend here in Discovery Oasis. We're trying to, again, build that place where, where the diverse intellectual and and medical ecosystem has the opportunity for what I call spontaneous purposeful collaboration and it is really only through that that it will really unlock the opportunities and and create solutions for things that were once deemed impossible and we, what we don't want is Discovery Oasis for example to have six million square feet of pharmaceutical development right, right? the purpose really is to have it's a little long-winded, but I call it the application of science to the mass production and manufacturing of healthcare. And there's various verticals in that very loosely phrased manufacturing piece, whether it's cell and gene therapies, regenerative medicines, drug discovery, medical robotics, devices, we, and obviously data refinery. I mean, we want to become, I, I really want us to become the sort of the Middle East of the refinery of the next energy resource driving this fourth industrial revolution, which is data. So we've spent a lot of energy at Mayo Clinic refining our rich data resources and making them usable. And we want that type of ecosystem here. And I hope that we encourage that throughout, throughout the state so mm -hmm. that there are this diverse clinical and intellectual interactions that are going to create solutions that are really only currently probably limited by that of our imagination so that's an amazing I was going to ask for closing thoughts I'm going to, like how how do we top that one but um, Eric closing thoughts I'd say join us um, you're you're looking at the robust marketing team and uh, uh, of discovery oasis we, we we put in a lot of work a lot of effort and it's to build something special but it's not just the Steve and Eric show, the Dr. Lester and Bob show. Um, we, we want this to be something that the community looks at and takes pride in. 
And so we invite everyone to, to participate in that. We are very accessible. We, we, it's easy to tour the site. It's easy to see the site. Mayo Clinic is such a wonderful asset to have here in Arizona. ASU is such a wonderful asset to have here in Arizona. Let's tell that story and let's make this the, the incredible success Cinderella story that it's certainly going to become over the next five and ten years. Awesome. What do you think, guys? <laughs>